Hey there, this is Ducko from LumenCentral.com and welcome to the Duo Vault of Glass Guy. This raid is labeled as an intermediate difficulty on our scale, so make sure you're comfortable with low matting before starting. Before heading into the guide, make sure to understand how Bog functions as a 3-man raid as well as the mechanics themselves. Having raid armor is not necessary, but it will be very helpful in some encounters. Loadouts for each encounter will be listed in the description since damage loadouts usually change every season. This guide is best experienced by using guides on our site since you will be able to see the 3D model of the map while listening to it. Make sure to subscribe and like the video since we'll be dropping guides for all women in the game so you'll never miss them. Without further ado, let's get started with the first encounter. Assign one player to the left and one player to the right side. Your main goal will be to focus and instantly kill the minotaurs that spawn on your side after building all the plates up. Xenophage is extremely effective here because you can kill minotaurs from far away. There are three minotaurs on each side, so each player will focus those three. A great tip before heading into the opening is to go to the moon and rally to the flag there so you can have max ammo for Xenophage when you load in. Since this encounter is pretty easy, there isn't much that changes here as well. Assign one player to defend the right side, and one player to defend the left side conflux. The middle conflux, and that part of the map, will be defended by both players. Guns and abilities that have amazing adgar are really good here. Also, don't forget to run something that can stun overload champions. Let's take a look at how oracles play out. There are two methods on how you can do this. The first one is to assign one player to take care of the right side and middle oracles, and one player to take care of the left side oracles. There is also a spot on the right side of the big pillar in the middle, but you can walk in and see all seven oracles, so you can stand there as well if you'd like. It's also a good idea to run anti-oracle mods if you're wearing great armor, which will give you super energy every time you break an oracle. This makes it extremely easy to sit inside a Bell of Radiance and easily break all oracles with Xenophage. Make sure to add clear and kill snipers so you don't get flinched while shooting the oracles. Now let's head to Templar. Assign one player to do the relic, and the other player will be doing damage. On our map, you can see all 5 possible Templar block locations. Do oracles and break Templar's shield after he does ritual and negation. He will instantly detain someone after that, so be careful if you're using rockets or GLs for damage. After the initial detain, the next one will appear after 14 seconds, and so forth. It's usually best to do one block and after that do oracles, since consistency is important on Templar. The relic players should run burst damage or damage over time weapons, since they can drop the relic, do some damage, and pick it back up if they need to move. The best spot to do damage from when you pop a Well of Radiance is right here, because you can see every single teleport block and break the detained relic player. Take note that Vel Radiance applies anti-barrier to your weapons that don't have a champion mod, which makes your bullets go through the tame barriers if shooting from it. You can walk out of the well to break the other player, but it's easier to run a weapon that already has a champion mod applied, which won't be overridden by well. After wrapping Templar up, go through the Gorgon maze and head into the next encounter. This encounter is the hardest encounter of this duo, and there are many methods of doing this encounter. I left a video for every strat in the description if you want to see how they all fully play out. In this video, we'll be covering by far the easiest strategy called Hybrid with a Stasis Warlock and a Void Titan. The whole idea is that the Titan will be rotating between Mars and Venus to kill Minotaurs while the Stasis Warlock kills Overloads and Gatekeepers and delays the adds with turrets. Before starting the encounter in a flawless run, it's recommended that you do some ammo farming. You can infinitely ammo farm when you start the encounter, and when you're ready to do the mechanics, you can kill the first gatekeeper that spawns the relic. In duos of this encounter, we won't be touching the relic at all. Let's go step by step how this encounter fully plays out. Warlock will go into Venus and kill the first two waves of adds, and wait for the major spawn. Once the second wave of adds spawns, Titan will go into Mars, shoot a galley rocket, and immediately leave in order not to wipe to no one being in the main room. After coming out, the overloads and gatekeeper will spawn. 
The Titan will kill both Overlords and the Gatekeeper. If the first major spawn on Venus is a Minotaur, Titan will be doing Venus first, and if it's a Wyvern, Titan will be doing Mars first. After this callout, Titan will go into the portal where the Minotaur is and kill him with Void Grenades. He will also clear waves of adds until a Wyvern spawns, which he will kill and leave to go to the other room. While Titan is doing his job in one of the sides, the Warlock will quickly go into the opposite side and throw a stasis turret to slow down the adds. He will also kill adds with Galahorn and Forbearance and quickly leave in order not to wipe to no one being in the main room. Warlock will also kill Overloads and Gatekeepers in the main room once they appear. Keep rotating until you kill all 6 waves of majors and do the final conflux in the main room normally. After wrapping this up, you'll be heading into the final boss, Atheon. Since there are only 2 players, everyone will get teleported to either Mars or Venus, which will result in a wipe since there's no one in the main room. There is a flawless and a non-flawless method of dodging the teleport for this encounter. For the non-flawless, one player will jump off the map before starting the encounter and respawn once the remaining player gets teleported. With this strategy, you'll have to one phase Atheon because you won't be able to do the same thing in the next phase. For the flawless strategy, you'll need to have a Warlock player running Heat Rises. Once Atheon spawns when the encounter starts, the player will activate Heat Rises and go up the Glass Throne as shown on the map. The spot where the player ends up in doesn't count as being in the room, making the player not teleport when Atheon does his mechanic. Once Atheon does the teleport animation, you'll need to quickly get down in order not to wipe. When you get down, open the portal and call out the oracles. Since you have increased ability generation in this encounter, you should run fusion nades with Verity's Brow to do a lot of damage. It's also important to run Tractor Cannon to cook Atheon even more. If you don't want phase him, make sure to save a grenade to be able to activate Heat Rises in the next phase. Repeat all of this until Atheon is dead. And that should be it. Make sure to like and subscribe, since that helps us a lot. You can also support the project by subscribing to Loman Central Pro on our site, and you'll get awesome benefits in return. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.